Hi, welcome back. Well, as promised, let's go to the management of Sriram Properties. We have a lot of factors in play, rising interest rates, but the real estate sector seems to be doing well with strong demand trends. But we'll speak to Sriram Properties to understand the expansion plans and pricing scenario as well. We have the Managing Director, Murli Malayapan, uh, to discuss uh, the outlook going forward as well. So, good afternoon. Thanks a lot for joining us. Um, I wanted to understand your uh, product pipeline, the launch that you're planning this year. 12 likely launches in FY23, but quarter one was muted in terms of launches. Around one or two is what you did. Uh, will you be able to keep up with the pace of your guidance as far as launches are concerned? And what is the targeted area in terms of launches? Will it be, uh, say, via a joint development? Will it be a JV? What is the development mode? We have planned about uh, 11 projects this year, and we had done only one in Q1. And Q2, there are a couple of more projects lined up. And Q3, as you know that this festival season is catching up in India now. After three years, India is getting into big festive mood. So we are also aligning to that uh, uh, festivity what we are looking at now. So quite a lot of projects are lined up and also good number of offers are being lined up for Q3. We should be able to meet our uh, uh, projections, whatever we have given, uh, guideline we have given, we should be able to do that. And well, market project. is looking very positive. Uh, we are extremely bullish on the market. You said 11 projects or 12 projects to be launched this year? 11. All of each one is already launched. Okay, yeah. okay. got it. And uh, can you tell us how many are going to be launched in Q2, Q3 and Q4? Can you give us the breakup? Q2 about two projects and Q3 we should be able to do about six projects. So in uh, by end of Q3 we would have done out of 11, nine projects would have launched. No, one done, then two more in Q2. That takes us to three and yeah. plus six then. And then yeah, in Q4, yeah, you have two Q3. more. And when you said yeah. you will uh, maintain the targets that you had set, told us earlier, you mean a volume target of 4.6 million square feet and collections of 1,700 for this year? Yeah, that is on track now as, as on date. That is on track. So we don't see any major uh, macro issue at this point of time. Mm. Hence, that should happen as per our timeline, what we are planning now. Okay. Oh. And uh, this uh, volume growth that you're expecting at 4.6 million square feet with collections rising, uh, in terms of pricing as well, will you see a growth? So that value growth that will come in for you, uh, how much of it will come from pricing as well? Are you able to push more prices after what you saw in second half of FY22 and quarter one as well? Yeah, as uh, I have been maintaining that price increase is inevitable. We expect the price increase to happen uh, substantially. I expect the price to go up at least another 5 to 8 percent in the next six months' time. So, price increase is becoming inevitable due to several factors. As I keep maintaining, it's a consolidation is one factor which is driving us very, very uh, aggressive. So, price will increase will happen. Uh, already, we increased some of the project's prices now, and we'll further increase the prices during this H2. You said that offer there'll be lucrative, attractive offers for uh, customers during Diwali. So how does that tie in with the planned price increase? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, as I said, after three years, this is the first time, I mean, India getting into big festive mode. And we have already started uh, witnessing a lot of uh, interest from the uh, prospective customers. Hence, we are also rolling out a uh, quarter of, in fact, some of the projects were lined up to synchronize with the festival season. That's also one reason we pushed for Q3. So uh, we are coming out with some attractive offers for Q3 uh, with price increase is what we are looking at now. So price increase is becoming inevitable and we will, uh, I'm, I'm very positive about price increase. Okay, but you're sensitive about the price increase. There will be some offers, but uh, uh, because of the inevitability of price increases, they'll go through is what you're saying, despite the discounts that you're talking about. Yeah, no, there is no discounts. It's a festival offer. Festival it's offer. It's a packaging. Oh, Basically, I mean, uh, uh, some some people are doing, I mean, twenty five, seventy five, some twenty seventy ten. This kind of offer. Okay. But as price increase happens, it's not a discount. Oh, we God. all love uh, discounts <laughs> and offers, right? Festive <laughs> season and uh, offers is something that goes together. Um, uh, I wanted to understand cash flows as well because in real estate sector, uh, that is one way to understand the health of the company as well. I was looking at your investor presentation, the estimated receipts from unsold units around 2,600 crore rupees, collection spending from sold units around 3,000 crore rupees. By uh, what is the annual free cash flow that you can generate? You did say 1,700 crore rupees is the collection in FY23. What is the free cash flow expected, say, over the next two to three years? 
the collection as i said uh, it is going as per the plan now every month on month we have been uh, i mean clogging uh, about 100 crores plus and uh, mean during q3 q4 it will increase so collection is happening now free cash flow we should be able to generate close to about 250 to 300 crores during this financial year that is also on track today so mm -hmm. we are also aggressively looking at new projects uh, as we, as we go on you said the consolidation is taking place. Have you been able to acquire any projects which were under financial stress, duress, any builders that you've acquired? And if you could tell us a little bit more on that. There are plenty of projects in pipeline. In fact, we have closed uh, some projects with uh, uh, some of the NBFCs and we have launched. As we speak, we just concluded one project with a small developer in Bangalore. Uh, and a couple of other uh, projects we actually take on over from other smaller developers and uh, launched. Mm -hmm. One in Chennai, we are uh, in discussions now. We should get closed. So, plenty of opportunities are there because of the consolidation on all the smaller developers who could not uh, deliver. So, they are all folding into it, either mm -hmm. through NCLT or ARC or the NBFC model. As you know, that we have lined up uh, quite a lot of projects, and I mean, more than about 35% of the projects are in development management. Yeah. And uh, uh, mostly, I mean, it's from other developers who are struck or who have not been able to do it. Okay. Uh, so that is about uh, working with smaller developers. Uh, having said whatever we discussed, what is the outlook on debt? Because you will be generating free cash flows of around 250 to 300 crore rupees. Your current net debt in uh, the quarter gone by was around 364 crore rupees. Uh, what is the plan by the end of the year? And will your uh, share of debt coming in from NBFCs, that is around 50%, it's higher on that side, will that continue? No, that NBFC portion is already started coming down now. So we have already replaced some of the NBFCs with uh, public sector banks and that will come down drastically. Overall, net debt position is likely to come down further by end of the fiscal FA23. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Malayappan, thanks a lot for joining us and taking us through all the details. So that's the word coming in from Sriram Properties. Demand remains strong. They are expecting volumes of 4.6 million square feet in this year itself with free cash flows of around 250 to 300 crore rupees. The stock, however, considering the market moves as well, is down 2%, but is off 25% from the 52-week high as well.